the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. The Liturgy of the Word, Quddas al Ma'udin. Liturgy of the Word for the th third Sunday of Abib, July 26, 2020. Abib 19, 1736. The Gospel of Matins. Listen to the Holy Gospel, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to our teacher, Saint Luke. The evangelist, may his blessings be with us all. Amen. From the May his blessings be with us all. Amen. Behold, let the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, whom by night you stand in the house of the Lord. Alleluia. Blessed. Savior and King of us all, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Now, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened and they were greatly perplexed about this. Then behold two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is raised Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. And they remembered all his word. Then they returned from the tomb and told all the things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and other women with them who told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they don't, did not believe them. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down he saw the linen cloth, laying by themselves, and he departed, marveling to himself at what had happened. And, and glory be to God,
and he drove them from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks took Sosthenes, the ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. But Galeo took no notice of these things. So Paul still remained a good while. Then he took leave of the brethren and sailed for Syria, and Priscilla and Aquila were with him. He had his hair cut off at Centria, for he had taken a vow. And he came to Ephesus and left them there, but he himself entered the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they asked him to stay a longer time with them, he did not consent, but took leave of them, saying, I must by all means keep this coming feast in Jerusalem, but I will return again to you, God willing. And he sailed from Ephesus. And when he had landed at Caesarea and gone up and greeted the church, he went down to Antioch. After he had spent some time there, he departed and went over the region of Galatia and Phrygia in order, strengthening all the disciples. The word of the Lord shall grow, multiply, be mighty, and be confirmed in the holy church of God. Amen. Alibraxis, Fasthum min Amen, Abe and Rusul al Athar, Al Mashmudina bin Amat al Ruh al Qudus, Barakatum takun man, Amen. ولما كان غاليون يتولى أخائية قام اليهود بنفس واحدة على بولس وآتوا به إلى كرسي الولاية قائلين إن هذا يستميل الناس أن يعبدوا الله بخلاف الناموس وإذ كان بولس مزمعا أن يتكلم قال غاليون لليهود لو كان ظلما أو خبثا رديا أيها اليهود لكنت بالحق قد احتملتكم ولكن إذا كان مسألة عن كلمة وأسماء وناموسكم فتبصرون أنتم لأني لست أشاء أن أكون قاضيا لهذه الأمور فطردهم من الكرسي فأخذ جميع اليونانيين سستانيس رئيس المجمع وضربوه قدام الكرسي ولم يهم غاليون شيء من ذلك أما بولس فلبث أياما كثيرة ثم ودع الإخوة وسافر في البحر إلى سوريا ومعه برسكلة وأكلة بعدما حلق رأسه في كنخرية لأنه كان عليه نذر فأقبل إلى أفسس وتركهما هناك أما هو فدخل المجمع وحاج اليهود وإذ كانوا يطلبون أن يمكث عندهم زمانا أطول لم يجب بل ودعهم قائلا ينبغي على كل حال أن أعمل العيد القادم في أورشليم ولكن سأرجع إليكم أيضا إن شاء الله فأقلع من أفسس ولما نزل في قيصرية صعد وسلم على الكنيسة ثم انحضر إلى أنطاكيا وبعدما صرف زمانا خرج واجتاز بالتتابع في كورة غلاطية وفي رجية يشدد جميع التلاميذ وكلمة رب تنمو وتزداد وتعتز وتثبت في كنيسة الله المقدسة آمين اليوم التاسع عشر من شهر أبيب المبارك أحسن الله انقضاءه وعادوا عليكم وعلينا وأنتم ونحن في هدوء واطمئنان مغفور الخطايا والزلات من قبل مراحم الرب الرؤوف يا أبائي وإخوتي أمين The martyrdom of the martyrs of the massacre of Isna The martyrdom of San Pantelimon, a physician The martyrdom of San Bidaba, Bishop of Qift أنبا أندرو أن أنبا خرستو ظلو The departure of Pope Ioannis X The 85th Patriarch of Alexandria On this day of the year 19 of the Martyrs 303 the great Saint Amba Bidaba, Bishop of Qift, and his companion, the priest Andrew, his cousin, and Saint Christo Dullus were martyred. This Holy Father was born in the city of Armand to Christian parents. His mother's sister had also a son called him Andrew. Both children were raised in a true Christian upbringing. 
Andrew and his cousin Bidaba liked each other since their youth. They eagerly studied together the holy books. When they grew up, they decided to forego the world. They went to the eastern mount to an ascetic father called Amba Isaac El Qasr El Sayyad Mount. There they secluded themselves to a life of worship and contemplation. Saint Isaac prophesied for Amba Bidaba that he would be a shepherd for the flock of Christ and would receive the crown of martyrdom. And Andrew also would receive the crown along with him. The two saints made their living by transcribing the church books, selling them, and distributed the rest among the poor. The bishop of Qift, Amba Tadrus, heard of them, and he ordained Budaba a priest, and ordained Andrew a deacon, and dwelt with him. After the departure of Amba Tadrus, the people anonymously agreed to nominate the priest Bidaba to be their bishop. Pope Peter, the seal of martyrs, consecrated him a bishop for Qift. When he arrived, the people of the parish went out to receive him with great joy. When he sat on the episcopal throne, he continued to live an ascetic life. God honored the saint by granting him the gift of performing miracles. He ordained the deacon Andrew, his cousin, a priest. When Diocletian incited the persecution, Arianus, the governor of Ancina, came to Isna. Saint Bidaba went to him and confessed the Lord Christ before him, along with the priest Andrew and Saint Christodoulos. When the governor knew their identity tried to befriend them with many promises. When he failed, he ordered to throw them in prison where the Lord Christ appeared and comforted them. The next morning, the governor ordered to bring them out of prison and behead them. Thus they received the crown of martyrdom. The blessing of their prayers be with us. Old Amen. في هذا اليوم أيضا من سنة 19 للشهداء كانت المذبحة الكبرى في مدينة إسنا ذلك أنه لما حضر أريان سوالي أنصنا وسمع به الشعب اجتمعوا جميعا كبارا وصغارا وخرجوا إلى باب المدينة وصلوا صلاة الشكر ثم صعدوا إلى جبل أغاثون لأجل عيد الأنبى إسحاق السائح وكان الأنبا أمونيوس أسقف إسنا مقيما في قليته في الجبل فاستقبلهم ووعظهم أن يثبتوا على الإيمان وأوضح لهم الأمجاد السماوية والأكاليل النورانية المعدة للشهداء والقديسين وسهروا جميعا الليل كله في الصلاة والتسبيح وفي الصباح قام الأنبا أمونيوس أقام الأنبا أمونيوس القداس وناول الشعب من الأسرار المقدسة وبعد القداس وصل الوالي فصرخوا جميعا نحن مسيحيون نؤمن بربنا يشفع المسيح فأمر الوالي جنوده أن يقتلوهم بالسيوف والرماح فأكملوا شهادتهم ونالوا الأكاليل السمائية وبني على اسمهم دير الشهداء في مكان استشهادهم وما زال قائما حتى الآن بركة صلواتهم فلتكن معنا أمين On this day also was the martyrdom of, Saint, of the Honorable Saint Pantelimon, the physician. This saint was born in the city of Tamadan to a pagan father whose name was Astochius and to a Christian mother whose name was Unala. They taught him the profession of medicine. A priest lived nearby their house, and every time Pantelimon passed by him, and the priest saw his stature 
intelligence, knowledge, and wisdom, he was sorrowful for him for being away from God. The priest entreated God in his prayers to guide Pantelimon to the way of salvation. Having repeated his petition to God for his sake, the Lord told him in a vision that he would believe at his hand. The priest rejoiced and started to speak to him whenever he passed by him until friendship grew between them. The priest started to explain to him the corruption of idol worshipping and the nobility of the faith of the Lord Christ and the noble life of its followers. He told them also that those who believe in Christ, signs and wonders were performed by their hands. When Pantelimon, the physician, heard that, he rejoiced and desired to perform these signs to perfect his medical profession. One day he was passing through the marketplace and he saw a man whom a serpent had bitten lying on the ground and the serpent was standing up before him. He said to himself, I will put to test the words of my teacher, the priest. If you believe in the Lord Christ, you shall work signs and miracles in his name. He drew near that man and prayed a long prayer, asking the Lord Christ to manifest his power in the healing of that man and in killing of the serpent, lest it harm someone else. When he finished his prayer, the man rose up alive and the serpent fell down dead. His faith increased and went to the priest who baptized him and he went on practicing medicine. One day, a blind man came to Pantelimon to treat him, but his father sent him away. The saint asked him, who was asking for me? His father replied, it was a blind man that you have no cure for. The saint told him, you shall see the glory of God. He called the blind man back and asked him, if you can see, will you believe in the God who shall heal your eyes? The man said, yes, I will believe. The saint prayed a long and profound prayer, and then he laid his hands upon the eyes of the blind man and said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive your sight. Immediately he received his sight and believed in the Lord Christ. When his father saw that, he also believed the saint brought them to the priest who baptized them. When his father departed, he set his, he set his slaves free and gave all his money to the poor. He treated the sick freely and asked them to believe in Christ. The other physicians were jealous of him and they laid accusation against him the priest and many others who had believed in his at his hands. Before the emperor who brought and threatened to torture them if they did not deny the Lord Christ. When they did not yield to his threat, he tortured them severely and then beheaded them. The emperor want to exaggerate in torture went on exaggerating the torture of Saint Pentelimon by casting him to the lions, which did not harm him. However, the Lord strengthened and healed him. Finally, the emperor ordered to behead him. Thus, he received the crown of martyrdom. The blessing of his prayers be with us. Amen. في هذا اليوم أيضا من سنة 1085 للشهداء 1369 ميلادية تنيح القديس البابا يؤنس العاشر البطريرك الخامس والثمانون من بطاركة الكرات المرقوسية كان هذا البابا سورياني الأصل من دمشق الشام وكان عالما فاضلا وبعد نياحة البابا مرقس الرابع اجتمع رأي الأساقفة والأراخنة الاختيار الراهب يوحنا السورياني بطريركا فرسموه يوم 12 بشمس 1079 للشهداء 1363 ميلادية قام هذا البابا بعمل الميرون سنة 1369 بدائر القديس ماكاريوس وكان معه عشرون أسقفا وقد حدث في أيامه قحط شديد استمر ثلاث 
سنوات كان البابا خلاله يشدد شعبه ويعزيهم وأخيرا تنيح بسلام بعد أن مكث على الكرسي المرقسي ست سنوات وشهرين وثمانية أيام ودفن بدير الحبش بجوار جبل المقطم بركة صلواته فلتكن معنا ولربنا المجد دائما أبديا آمين Agios oseos, agios enxeros, agios athanatos o egbarthenu, genetis eleis o limers, agios oseos, agios enxeros, agios athanatos o stavrotis dimers, eleis o limers, agios oseos, agios enxeros, Agios athanatun suan asa sikron nekron, ki an elthon yestos oranus, elei suni medduk se petrikeyu, ki agio gnev mati keni ke ai, ke eston si un astoni onun amin agetrias, elei suni mes. Stand in the fear of God and let us listen to the Holy Gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to our teacher, St. Luke. May his holy blessing be with us, holy man. From the sons of our father, David, the prophet, and the king. May his holy blessing be with us, holy man. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, gracious in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him, to all who call upon Him in truth. Son of the living God, to whom is the glory forever. Amen. And the apostles, when they had returned, told him all that they had done. And then he took them and went aside privately into a deserted place, belonging to the city called Bethsaida. But when the multitudes knew it, they followed him. And he received them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who had need of healing. And when the day began to wear away, the twelve came and said to him, Send the multitudes away that they may go into the surrounding towns and country and lodge and get provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. And he said to them, you give them something to eat. And they said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we go and buy food for all these people. For there were about five thousand men. And he said to his disciples, make them sit down in groups of fifty. And they did so, and made them all sit down. And he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to the heavens, he blessed and wrote them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the multitude. So they all ate and were filled, and twelve baskets of the leftover fragments were taken up by them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Uh, today is the Sunday, July 26, 2020, and it uh, meets the Coptic uh, calendar at the date um, Abib 19, 1736. And uh, we send you all our 
love from the Lord Jesus, even from afar. And we pray for every one of you and we ask for your prayers. And uh, yesterday was July 25th, and that was the Kraza testing day. Uh, thank God that eight teams from our church tested in Kraza. One team, actually nine teams, I think. Uh, one team for pre K and K. One team for first and second. Two teams for third and fourth. One team four, fifth, and six, two teams for adult Arabic and two teams for adult English. <coughs> and that's probably the biggest number of teams who part participated in the Karaza. So even despite of the difficulty of the closure and, and the corona and everything, the Lord is pushing us forward and he's helping us because he is uh, the father. He understands that we are weak and he understands that this is a difficult time. And God as a father strengthens us in the difficult time. He doesn't abandon us in the difficult time. But we have to trust him and we have to understand his wisdom. And we have to understand his message. God allows these difficult times that we may run back to the bosom of God with prayers and supplications and spiritual readings and repentance and that every one of us will abandon the evil life and the sinful life and we come back to God in repentance. May God open our hearts, all of us, to see this message and to accept it. Uh, we pray for all, for all of you to be safe and healthy, and maybe you all be protected under the mighty arm of our Lord. The gospel of today is the gospel of feeding the multitude, according to St. Luke, the pure evangelist. As you know, the, the miracle of feeding the multitude is mentioned in four Gospels, in the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it is the only miracle that's mentioned in the four Gospels, feeding the 5,000. And um, we read this Gospel all, every day in the Gospel of the ninth hour. And the wisdom of reading it in the ninth hour is this was the hour of breaking fast and fasting days. As a child, I remember in Egypt, how in every Wednesday and Friday throughout the year, not only in Great Land, we had a liturgy at our church in Egypt that finishes at 3 p.m. And many people used to go and there was one liturgy that finishes at 11 or 10.30 in the morning. And there was always another one that finishes at 3 p.m. Every Wednesday and every Friday. And that shows you that up to a recent time, uh, our Coptic Church uh, preserved the fast of Wednesday and Friday very strictly. And uh, maybe... Things have changed now, but at least we can observe the fast of Wednesday and Friday as much as we can with, uh, with not eating and drinking until a suitable time for everyone. Some people can stay until one or two or three. Some people can stay only until noon. Some people even can stay until 10 or 11 or even 9. But um, we should always fast Wednesday and Friday. And uh, we offer the sacrifice of fasting to our Lord. The fast of Wednesday and Friday is indeed uh, a first degree fast. Um, but I ask you all to keep the fast of Wednesday and Friday. Um, don't break it. 
and uh, uh, keep it always uh, during fasting time and during non-fasting time. And in this great miracle, we also see how the Lord Jesus fed the multitude in an orderly way and he requested that they sit in groups of 50 and that the Lord Jesus also gave thanks and he broke the bread and he gave it to the disciples and the disciples gave to the multitude which shows you how he trained his disciples to be stewards of his ministry and he gave them and they fed the multitude and that's how are the ministers of God in the church in any capacity because you are close to Christ and you are intimate with Christ he gives you from his grace and you take from his grace and pass to others. So you become a steward on the manifold grace of God. In this miracle also, we see how Jesus takes care of his servants. That even in a deserted place, 12 baskets of fragrant fragments were left over. The richness of God. They didn't have any, but after everybody, about 15,000 people or 20,000 people ate, there was leftover food that filled 12 baskets. And that's how God encourages us, that he will always give us multitude of blessings. This is a beautiful miracle that shows us how Jesus is compassionate and he cares for all our needs. Jesus doesn't only care for the spiritual needs, but he cares for our emotional needs and he cares for our physical needs. And as I notice these days, a lot of people are in fear and some fall into depression. And we rem remember that Jesus, our Lord, will visit those in his love and mercy. We just have to pray. We just have to pray a little more, a little harder, with depth. We have to be deep in our prayers. So God will hear our prayers and he will lift up this difficult time from us. We, so we come back to be joyful and happy. And in his house, we rejoice again. May God bless all of you and may God support you. And just a quick update that, God willing, we will have another meeting soon with His Eminence, uh, Metropolitan Ambassador, which we will decide on that meeting uh, what the next phase is going to look like. Uh, as of now, as you know, the, uh, the State of California guidelines and the DICES guidelines uh, indicate only open air prayers. And because we don't have much of open air, uh, we are experimenting uh, by small liturgies um, to pray in the patio. And we are asking for your prayers that at least we go back at 25%, <laughs> which was very like good. We were happy with the 25%. Uh, if we go back to 25%, God willing, we will put the schedule again and we, and we will open liturgies on Wednesday and Friday without reservation. But if that continues, we will inform you if this open air uh, uh, restriction will continue, we will definitely inform you how we can find ways for you to take communion. Um, uh, even if you cannot attend the liturgy, on the patio because it has 12 seats only. Uh, maybe we can figure a way for you at least to come and take communion. Of course, it is the tradition of the church that we attend liturgy to take communion. But uh, in these circumstances, I'm sure we will have the blessing and the absolution of his eminence to find a way just to give communion to people. They can come maybe to take communion towards the end of liturgy with certain numbers, of course. <clears throat> we we just, uh, we lift up our, our, our eyes to heaven and we look up 
at the Lord Jesus and we really trust his mercy. And if he is delaying his response to us about this uh, pandemic, it's because he wants us to pray more. And he wants, he wants us to pray with depth. And he really wants us to go back to him with all our hearts and to enjoy his love. To his name is the glory forever. Amen.